Working on bulkhead 6, which separates our salon from our cockpit within the deck space, and is the entrance to our aft bunk in the hulls, is getting a full reinforcement on the inner facing side. Because we have cut out a large area of the bulkhead to act as the entrance to our beds, and such large loads are placed on this bulkhead overall, Max Cruise has designed it to have multiple layers of fiberglass added in varying spots. In the most narrow area, connecting to the outer hull, we are laying down four strips of unidirectional. One layer of unidirectional is also placed on the edge that connects to our chamfered panel. Then, in the area above our bed opening, which will connect to the outer hull and the deck, we will add three layers of fiberglass in a combination of 090 and 4545 double bias. If that wasn't enough, we then cover the entire bulkhead in a layer of 090. And that is going to be one beefed up bulkhead. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. Do you see that right there? It is 94 degrees in the tent today. It's about five o'clock right now, so it is definitely time for us to switch to working nights. Right now I'm in here preparing some fiberglass so that once the sun goes down and temperatures become bearable again, Matt and I can come in and do some glassing. Working with our roll of 090 fiberglass, which is 50 inches wide, I had done a pre-measurement on length for it to be able to span from the top to the bottom of our bulkhead on the outermost side. Knowing that I could use the extra material that was sitting over our bunk entrance, I traced it out leaving a few inches for overlap and cut it using my favorite item, our electric scissors. All right, so now that I have my extra areas cut out, I can start piecing together the bits that are still exposed and what is nice about this 090 fiberglass is I have the option to rotate it 90 degrees and it's still gonna have the fibers going zero and 90, which means if it doesn't fit you know, horizontally, I can put it in vertically. And we're just going to use every little piece that we can because as Matt and I are finding out, materials are at a premium right now. We don't wanna run out of anything because there's not always a guarantee that we can get it restocked, at least not right away. Well, as you can see, I have managed to get the whole bulkhead covered with our 090 fiberglass. And I also have my uh, unidirectional, which is going to span on the uh, outside bulkhead, the narrow edge, and then the one where it curves into the chamfered panel of the hull. Here I've got my peel ply. That's my last project before I can go have dinner tonight is to kind of cut this out and yeah nearing the finish line of preparation at least, and it has cooled down to a brisk 89 degrees in here. Pretty nice. All right, we have a clock that is reading 10.30 p.m. We have a thermostat reading 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and humidity is about 76, so we are good to go. Matt is going through right now and giving a nice styrene wipe to the surface to prepare it for bonding. We want to get those pieces of unidirectional right behind Matt down first, and they span along the length there and kind of the corner there. 
So once we get those down, then it is the extra supports that run right along here. And then after that is everything else. The first strips to go down were our unidirectional spanning vertically on the outer hull side, which is strengthening the area where our chain plates will be. With all of the fibers running in a vertical direction, this helps to beef up the area against the upward in-tension forces of the chain plates. And to make sure there are zero air bubbles left when we finished, the both of us went over it heavily with a metal roller to push out any of that excess air. After we had added the other strip of unidirectional to the chamfered panel, we began working our way up from the bottom, adding the 090 fiberglass and continuing up toward the top, while adding the multiple layers just above the door opening on the way. Just about 1.30 in the morning and brushes are going down. Matt's just kind of double checking things because we ended up with a little bit more resin than we needed to finish it, but <sighs> glad that is done. Let's take a look at the results. Not what we were hoping for necessarily. That 090 is a tough one. The crap air. But we've got all the extra fortifications running along there. Of course, that had the four coats of unidirectional before we even got to the 090 layers and the um, biaxial. And of course, everything else was coated with the 090 and peel ply. So I think Matt is going to spend a few more minutes chasing bubbles out, but after that, we're just gonna walk away, come back in the morning and see what we can do. Morning time. Uh fairly early in the a.m. It is already really, really warm. Um, just came to kind of look at how everything turned out last night and kind of pretty much as we expected. There is some, it, they appear to mostly be on the surface area, but there are some little uh, air spots that we see here. And specifically the trim around the edge is gonna need to come off and uh, be sanded back down. But yeah, we'll give you kind of a flyby. So as you can see, there's little uh, little bubbles right there in the surface. This is like six or seven layers. I believe it's just in the top surface. I'm gonna try sanding that later to hopefully get that out. And then you can see we had some puckering there, which is just inevitable when trying to bend around that edge. Not an issue at all. That will get sanded back and fared eventually. Um, but that's basically it. Now it's filming. Now it's recording, okay. Tonight we are taking a break from boat work and the incessant heat inside of the tent and we are moving ourselves outside to enjoy that heat. Right now we're actually at Pusser's and I am enjoying my very first painkiller, a big tradition in the area. And we are joined by our good friends Cam. Hi Cam. Hi. And Jeffrey. Hello. And the four of us are going on a romantic sunset cruise out on the Chesapeake. 
actually, it's also a historical talk, which we're looking forward to, but what I am most looking forward to is the boat that we're going on. It's got a bit of history, pretty amazing. I'm not gonna spoil the surprise for you, so you'll just have to wait and see it for yourself. If you have not figured it out yet from when we were leaving the dock, we are on the beautiful Woodwind 2, which is actually featured in Wedding Crashers in the movie, same exact boat they got to sail this. So we're out for a sunset cruise with Jeff and Cam. I'm gonna drink my Seas the day, which is actually made for this boat, if you can believe it. My craft beer me is like in heaven right now. And then of course, uh, Dave Handel is giving a talk about the area, but all in all, it's just a beautiful evening. Matt and I are so excited to be here. Not only to get away from the boat, but I mean like, I would have driven across the country to head this out to these people. Striped bass is the, uh, the most famous. Blue, uh, blue crabs, obviously, also very famous. And then occasionally, you know, some dolphins. Occasionally, some more exotic uh, fish will come up. Red drum were nearby. There's blue catfish, and there's some fish that you would normally associate with uh, freshwater. So fish that they provide, you know, like freshwater or brown river mountains. So these rivers are not fed like they are out west. You know, they don't come down out of the mountains. At the moment, we are on a nice downwind tack heading up towards the Bay Bridge because the winds are coming out of the south, southeast at about 10 to 15 knots. So as we keep hearing from the crew, this is magical conditions. The trade winds come from the south in the summer because apparently in D.C. and Baltimore, like this heat just settles in there and then it rises. And from the ocean, all of this, like wind comes from the south and from the Chesapeake trying to bring in cooler air underneath. So the trades come from the south in summer, which we are experiencing right now. It's beautiful out. Matt is looking at photos of when uh, the cast of Wedding Crushers was on the boat. Of course, Dave is giving his great talks, telling us all about the history of the areas that we're passing. So we are just so incredibly grateful to be out here tonight and it's so nice to be able to step away from the project as much as we love it and just experience the area like this. We are back to work again on Bulkhead 6. This time we're working on what's going to be sitting in the port side. And also I have the tripod all set up so that we don't have the camera resting on the bulkhead as we're rolling it like crazy trying to get all of the air bubbles out. So we'll try and get a few better shots of this one since we kind of dropped the ball on the one up there. 
So what I have spent the earlier part of the day doing is cutting out our 090. That goes all the way across here. Matt had already done the different pieces that just span around like the top of the opening here, which is going to be um, the aft queen beds. So you can see the 090 fabric here, which it runs in a 90 degree fashion instead of the 45, which it sits like that and that. This time we have also cut it much closer to the window because last time we had it overlapping and it made it really hard to get the corner to sit. We have all of our peel ply cut and ready to go on top. So Matt is just going to give the fiberglass surface a styrene wipe. And then we can start glassing for the day and based on our last experience up there, probably gonna take us about three hours to get this done. Um, slightly cooler today, might go with 1.5% of the peroxide. Past few days have been in the 80s, we've brought that down to one and a quarter percent. Uh, but yeah, luckily we haven't had any issues so far of it kicking too fast on us. Just as we did in the first round, our strips of unidirectional fiberglass, which sit against the whole side, were the first pieces we added. Knowing there would be many layers to be added on top, our goal was to get out all of the air bubbles, layer by layer. This time, the next step we did was to add the reinforcements above our bunk opening. The first sheet to go down was our 090. Once that had been rolled into place, with as many air bubbles as possible pushed out, we moved on to the middle layer of 45-45 double bias, with the fibers in this cloth running at separate 45 degree angles. Then lastly, to go on top of this section, is another layer of our 090 cloth. Because of the fact we now had three layers over this area of the bulkhead, and the 090 is a thick mesh-like material, we spent a good portion of our time trying to work out any air trapped beneath with our metal rollers. Once the peel ply had been added to the top of this section, we moved down to the bottom of the bulkhead to begin covering it in our 090 fiberglass.
Having worked together to get this larger area glassed, smoothed, and covered in peel ply, we each began on our own sections, not only to hurry up the project a little bit, but also to stay out of each other's way since we are now moving on to tighter spaces. Somehow, that ended up being an incredible core workout, even though it felt like our arms were getting the most use just trying to push those air bubbles out. The 090 seems to get a lot of air bubbles, so it takes some extra muscle pushing those things out, but that's good because there's an ice cream bar waiting for me in the office right now, which I'm going to gladly eat in a few minutes. Um, but otherwise, I think it turned out pretty nice. There were a few sticky situations at the end. Um, one of our five gallon vinyl esters is nearing its end. It was kind of like sputtering on me as I was making the last uh, 16 ounces. So good thing it didn't run out on us right in the middle. It takes like 10 minutes or so to switch it over. And then all of my perfectly precisely cut peel ply, two pieces near the end, ended up on the ground, which I didn't notice until we were finishing. So I was scrambling to cut a couple of new pieces, but it all worked out, so. We're gonna let it cure for a bit. Um, I'm actually going to go work on the pacemaker for a little while, finish sanding the bottom so we can get that painted in the next couple days. And just let our backs recover. Oh. <laughs> so this area right in here is eight layers, four layers of unidirectional, um, three layers of 090 uh, bioxyl, and one layer of uh, double bias all in this area. So it was, everything else was great except for that 090. It's like a screen door, like uh, I guess it's probably like the best way to describe it, like mosquito netting is the stitching that they have on there. Um, it's horrible stuff. It is not from Grifco. This is just something else that I bought um, separately and it is just a nightmare to deal with. I don't know what the, the issue is, but it traps air and just holds it and holds it and holds it well to not let go. Um, so we do have some little spots across here, but those more hopefully just on the surface. And yeah, we'll sand those out later. <laughs> so time for sunshine and frozen candy bars. Hello there everyone. It is that time of week again where we say a big thank you to all of our patrons because without their support, there's no way that we could be doing this, no way that we could be building this catamaran. So we just wanna say thank you to them. And part of the way that we're doing that is putting everybody's names inside our hole in an area that's never gonna get painted over. This is actually going to be one of our storage lockers for sales and fenders. So when we set sail, we're gonna just gloss this over and every time we go to grab that new sail out, we'll be reminded of all the amazing people that got us to this point. And as you can see, we're really starting to fill up this back wall here. Pretty soon we'll be moving to the hall side. This week I have added the names of our patrons that joined up with us this past fall once we had gotten to Annapolis and Kent Island and found uh, the space that we're going to rent to do the build all the way up until just about when the container came. So a great group of people that I think are really interested in the build and what we're doing here. But I did want to give a shout out to a couple of people that really helped us out along the way. Down here we have Basil Papa Dimitriou, which I think is how you say that. Basil is actually a patron of ours that lives in London and we had the chance to meet him when we were there, took us out to a great dinner in town, and even got his butt over to Twickenham to pick us up at about 4.30 in the morning to drive us to London Heathrow so that we could fly back to the United States last fall after selling our boat. So a big thank you to Basil, we appreciate that a lot. 
And our next shout out is to Daniel, Catherine, and Constantine Gerber. You may have seen them from a few of our videos last summer when we were sailing in England. We uh, met up in the Isles of Scilly, shared a very rolly anchorage in the Helford River. But once we sold the boat and uh, needed a home for a few days, they welcomed us into their place into Twickenham. And we've been in great touch ever since then. In fact, we expect the three of them to visit so much, I'm hoping that I'm basically going to call the other side of the boat the Gerber Hall. So um, obviously you can tell that we have a great group of people that have been supporting us through the travels and through the build. So any small way we can say thank you, we want to do that. And if you are interested in getting your name up here too, potentially on this site here, just check out our link below and join our Patreon family today.